Hi, in this video I'm going to show you a little bit more about first order systems. In this case we're going to derive the transfer function for a first order system. So let's just have a look uh, at the equations we derived in the previous two videos. One was for the water tank and the other was for the resistor capacitor circuit. If you look at these carefully, you'll see there is a pattern. And the pattern is we have a variable derivative. We have a derivative that describes the change in a variable. Then we have a constant. These are the two constants, right? That's the constant. And then we have uh, the variable also then multiplied by a constant. So we have a constant then multiplied by a variable. So it's a single variable and the derivative is first order. Uh, this is a first order system. The minus sign here doesn't have to be minus, it could be plus. Um, but that's the sort of a common pattern we see in these first order systems. So let's have a look at another real one. Uh, it's a, quite a simple one. This is a chemic, simple, simple chemical system. All right, it has two reactions governed by a reaction V1 and a reaction V2. So V1 produces a compound X and then V2 degrades X at a rate V2. Now the rate of change of concentration in X is just uh, this equation here, okay? So if we assume that the rate at which x is degraded is a, is constant is a proportional to the concentration of x, uh, we can write we can replace v two with this k times x term. So this is our um, first order equation. You can see that it has the same pattern as before, where we have a constant minus a constant times the variable. Okay, and then we have the variable on this side, the dx by dt. Okay, so let's look at this system. Now I'm going to do one other thing. I'm going to replace the v2 by um, qt. Okay, by qt. Um, for now, we'll assume that qt is constant, all right? That doesn't change. Um, but in principle, it could be a function of time, but we'll just keep it constant. And so I now rewrite the differential equation um, like this, okay? Now we can take the Laplace transform on both sides. Um, in fact, let's do a little table, Laplace transform table. So we have the function here, whatever that, uh, whatever that is, f of t. And then we'll have the Laplace transform here, which is uh, actually we should keep, we should make it uh, f, of f of s. So if you end up with a, an x, for example, if you have an x of t, that turns into capital X of s. And if you have a constant, let's say constant x of t, that turns into x, uh, x, x of s, big x of s. If you have uh, an arbitrary function, Q of T, that just turns into capital Q of S. Okay, so those are the only of the rule. That's our Laplace transform table. Those are the only ones we need to know in this case. So now the other thing we have to know, oh, there's one other, of course, and that's the derivative. Now the derivative, the transform of a derivative depends on whether the initial conditions are zero or not. And we are going to assume that the initial conditions are zero. In fact, we always do that when computing the transfer function. And in that instance, um, the transform of that is simply little s times bigger s of x. So this assumes that x of zero equals zero, okay? So those are all the transforms we need. So as you can see, hopefully this one, this piece here turns into s of x, this Q turns into big Q of S, and then we keep the minus, of course, and then the K of X, which is this one here, K of X, which is this one here, turns into K of big X, and that's it. So now all we have to do is rearrange this. So S, X of S, 
uh, plus k x of s equals q of s. Then we pull out the um, big x of s equals q of s, and then we get x of s equals q s one over s plus k. Okay, and that's what we've got here. Okay, that's what we've got here. And that square didn't quite work out. Okay, that's the that's the Laplace transform of this differential equation. So I've got it here again. All right, that's it there. Um, now what we normally do or is we divide both sides by the input. So the Q of S is essentially the input to the system. And when we do that, we end up with this. And this technically then, this piece here in particular, is the transfer function. It's the, trans it's the, it's the Laplace transform of the differential equation without the input. All right? Now, those of you who know um, a bit more, you'll know that uh, it's also defined, the transfer function is also defined uh, for a system assuming S of S is an impulse. And if it's an impulse, then Q of S equals 1. Okay, and so we end up with uh, 1 over S plus K. So that's another way of looking at it. So we recognize then this term as the transfer function, and I will use uh, the symbol h of s to represent the transfer function. Okay. Now, since the denominator, the order of the denominator is 1, in other words, the highest power on s is 1, right? so the highest power on s is 1, this transfer function is called first order. It's a first order transfer function. Okay. Now notice also we have a 1 here. That's not always the case. Um, the numerator is often not 1. So in general, we would write probably the first, or, uh, first order transfer function uh, in this form. So it's some constant in the numerator, which I call here a, and then divided by this, con this s plus b, where s is the other term. Okay. So that's a first order transfer function. Now, you'll find in the books that it's a lot more common to re-express this transfer function in a, what's called a standard form. Okay, and the standard form is this. All right. And in the standard form, uh, the tau is called the time constant. And k is the gain, what's called the gain of the system. I will dis discuss these, um, the details of these terms in future videos. But for now, um, we'll just call them the time constant. And then the, uh, the gain or is also called the DC gain because it's the value you get when you set S to 0, which in the frequency domain, which in the frequency domain, is when j omega equals zero, so it's zero frequency. And so when you do that, if you do that, you set this to zero, you only get um, k, so you get this, all right? But we'll have more to talk about. We'll have another video to talk about what, what that actually means. But, but the key thing is that it's called the DC gain, okay? And the other one is the time constant. Now, it's pretty easy to go from, you know, this form to the standard form, uh, you essentially divide top and bottom by this term. So if you divide top and bottom by b, you end up with this. Of course, the b ends up as a 1. And so you end up with this. You end up with this expression, which is the standard form. Now, this, of course, means that the um, DC gain becomes a over b. And the time constant becomes 1 over b. Time constant becomes 1 over b. All right. Um, we'll, we'll have some examples in the future where we'll be able to interpret what these things mean. And again, I'll just summarize. 
uh, k is called the DC gain and tau is the time constant. So for example, you may be given an example such as this, a transfer function like this. And you'll notice it's in standard form. Okay, remember the standard form was k over some number tau times s plus 1. And we can see that's in standard form. And you immediately know that the DC gain is 10, because that's in the numerator, and the time constant is 3. Now, the time constant, I can add one little more factoid to the time constant. It has units of time, so maybe seconds. Okay. Now, if it's not in standard form, right, for example, this one, as I said, it's easy to put it into standard form. You just take the 12, the number in the, in the denominator, and divide top and bottom by that number. So we end up with this piece on the top, this piece on the top, and of course this disappears to 1, and then this becomes, this reciprocal of 12 becomes the uh, time constant. Okay, so we end up with 24 divided by 12 is 2, so that's k, and then the 1 over 12 becomes tau. Okay, so the dc gain is 2, and the time constant is 1 over 12. So it's very easy to go from an arbitrary form, well, it's not an arbitrary form, but from a form that looks like this into the standard form. Now, just as a sort of um, sort of background knowledge, um, you'll sometimes see the first order system written um, as a feedback system. And the feedback system contains... The actual process is this 1 over s tau, and it has a unit unity feedback, okay? Now, what's interesting about this is um, whenever you see uh, a 1 over s in a transform, um, you should immediately think of, so whenever you see a 1 over s in a transform, you should immediately think of integrator. Okay, so the 1 over s tau is some kind of integrator, right? so a physical device that does an integration. And the reason for that is because the Laplace transform of, a, of an in integration is 1 over s, Okay, so that's why. So you can think of a first order system as well, and there's, there's at least one example I know where this applies where um, as a, you can think of a first order system as an integrator with a feedback around it, all right? So that's sort of general background knowledge. Um, just to show you that this in, is indeed a first order system, if you remember, uh, this is the general equation for a negative feedback with a open loop transfer function of, of h and the feedback magnitude of k. So if you have a negative feedback system such as the one below, um, you can apply this equation here um, to get you a summary of the relationship between x, uh, x of s and q of s. So if we do that, let's say, so h of s in this case then is 1 over s tau, okay, and k is, is 1, okay, k is 1. Uh, all we have to do is, is insert these into here, and we end up with what we've got down here, this thing here. Okay, so we have 1 over s tau on the top, plus 1 times 1 over s tau on the bottom, right? And I can multiply top and bottom by multiply top and bottom by 1 over s tau, and I end up with that. And of course, that is the standard form for a first order system. Um, the other thing you'll see is often depicted in block form. So here's a here's a block, um, has some kind of input, has some kind of uh, input, uh, and that gives an output x. And then we have the um, first order block in the middle. Okay, and that's the end of this video.